Red lights blinked furiously on the console, indicating multiple enemy targets converging on their position. The alien fleet, a swarm of metallic beasts known as the Rhinar, had arrived at the edge of the system two days ago, humanity's forward base on Cestus. Nine was their target. Captain, they're within range, Lieutenant Harris reported, voice tense. Briggs nodded, eyes narrowing. Initiate defensive grid. All batteries. Prepare to fire. The command center buzzed with activity. Officers scrambled to relay orders, and the low hum of the base's power core intensified. The walls vibrated slightly, a subtle reminder of the imminent battle. Outside, the blackness of space was dotted with the cold, distant lights of stars and the much closer, menacing shapes of the Rhinar warships. They're not going to wait for us to make the first move, Briggs muttered. A sharp crackle filled the air as the base's long-range cannons unleashed their fury. Bright streaks of plasma shot toward the incoming fleet, carving through the vacuum of space. The Rhinar ships responded in kind, their weapons spewing lethal energy across the void. Explosions flared as both sides exchanged blows, the once quiet sector now alive with the sound of battle. Shields holding at 60%, Harris reported, his voice barely masking his anxiety. They're focusing fire on our main generators. Reinforce the shields around the core, Briggs ordered. Divert power from non-essential systems if you have to. The base shuddered as enemy fire slammed into their defenses. Briggs gripped the edge of the console, knuckles white, eyes fixed on the tactical display. The Rhinar fleet was vast, a tide of destruction that threatened to overwhelm them, but he knew his men, knew that they wouldn't give up without a fight. Sir, we've got a breach in Section 12, someone shouted. Send a response team, Briggs snapped. We can't let them gain a foothold inside the base. As the battle raged on outside, the interior of Cestus, Nine was no safer. The Rhinar had sent boarding parties, deploying their troops directly into the base. The halls echoed with the sound of gunfire and the clatter of armored boots. Human soldiers, clad in the latest combat suits, met the invaders head-on. Bullets flew, and the Rhinar warriors, towering over their human counterparts, answered with brutal efficiency. Get those charges set, a sergeant barked, his voice carrying over the din of combat. We need to blow that corridor before they push through. A group of engineers hurriedly placed explosive charges along a reinforced bulkhead, their hands steady despite the chaos around them. The sergeant raised his weapon, firing at the advancing Rhinar to buy his men time. Charges set, sir. One of the engineers yelled. Detonate, the sergeant ordered. The explosion rocked the base, a deafening roar that reverberated through the walls. The bulkhead collapsed, cutting off the Rhinar advance. For now, Briggs watched the progress on the screen, a satisfaction settling over him. The Rhinar were relentless, but so were they. Every inch of ground the aliens gained was paid for in blood. Human blood, yes, but Rhinar blood, too. They're sending more ships, Harris said, his voice breaking Briggs' focus. How many? Too many. Briggs grimaced. The Rhinar were throwing everything they had at them. It was clear they intended to wipe out the human presence in this sector once and for all. The odds were stacked against them. Order the fleet to fall back to defensive positions, Briggs said. We're not going to win this with brute force. What's the plan, sir? Harris asked, uncertainty in his tone. Briggs looked at the tactical map. Mind racing. They couldn't hold the line forever, but they didn't need to. Not if they played their cards right. We need to lure them in closer, Briggs said, voice steady. If they think we're on the ropes, they'll commit more resources to the attack. Once they're in range... We hit them with everything we've got. Harris nodded, understanding dawning in his eyes. A trap. A trap, Briggs confirmed. 
but it only works if they take the bait. Another shutter rocked the base, and Briggs knew the time for planning was over. The Rhinar were coming, and it was up to them to make sure they didn't leave. All units, prepare for close quarters combat, Briggs ordered, his voice carrying the weight of command. This is where we make our stand. No retreat. No surrender. The soldiers around him straightened, their fear replaced with determination. They knew what was at stake. Humanity had fought too hard, too long, to be driven back now. The final assault was beginning, and Briggs was ready. The Rhinar fleet surged forward, their warships closing in on the beleaguered human base. Captain Briggs watched as they advanced, his jaw set in a hard line. The trap was set, but the timing had to be perfect. One misstep, and they would be overrun. Sir, they're moving into the kill zone, Lieutenant Harris reported, his voice laced with tension. Briggs didn't reply immediately. His eyes flicked over the tactical display, reading the positions of both friend and foe. The Reiner ships were packed tightly together, their commanders confident in their numerical superiority. That was their mistake. Hold your fire, Briggs ordered his voice calm despite the storm of emotions churning inside him. Let them get closer. Seconds ticked by, each one stretching into an eternity. The Rhinar were almost within range, their weapons primed for the final strike. Every fiber of Briggs being screamed at him to give the order, to unleash hell on the invaders before it was too late. But he held firm. Timing was everything. They're charging their main cannons, Harris said, a note of urgency creeping into his voice. Wait, Briggs said, his eyes never leaving the screen. The Rhinar ships loomed large now, filling the display with their dark, angular forms. They were close enough that Briggs could almost see the cold, calculating eyes of the alien commanders on the other side. Now, he said the word escaping like breath he'd been holding too long. All batteries. Fire. The space around Cestus. Nine lit up as every remaining gun on the base and the surrounding fleet unleashed a torrent of firepower. Plasma beams, railgun slugs, and missile salvos streaked toward the tightly packed Rhinar ships. The aliens had no time to react. Their formation, designed for offense, left them vulnerable to the sudden, concentrated assault. Explosions blossomed across the Rhinar fleet, ships tearing apart under the relentless bombardment. The kill zone became a slaughterhouse. What had been an unstoppable advance turned into chaos as the Rhinar ships tried to scatter. Their once, coordinated attack falling into disarray. Direct hits on multiple targets, Harris reported, excitement breaking through his usual stoicism. They're pulling back. Briggs allowed himself a small smile. The trap had worked, but he knew better than to celebrate too early. The Rhinar were wounded, but not defeated. Press the attack, Briggs ordered. Don't let them regroup. The human ships, smaller and fewer in number, surged forward, capitalizing on the confusion. Fighters darted between the larger vessels, picking off stragglers while the larger ships focused their fire on the remaining Rhinar heavy cruisers. The base's cannons continued to pour fire into the enemy, determined to keep the pressure on. Enemy reinforcements are inbound, Harris warned, his voice pulling Briggs back to the harsh reality of their situation. Briggs' eyes narrowed. The Rhinar were stubborn. He'd give them that, but he wasn't about to let them off the hook. Redirect power to forward shields, Briggs commanded. We need to punch through their lines before the reinforcements arrive. The human fleet, battered and bruised, pressed on. The Reiner ships still in the fight rallied, returning fire with renewed ferocity. The space between the two forces became a deadly no-man's land, filled with the streaks of weapons fire and the wreckage of destroyed vessels. Sir, We're taking heavy damage, Harris called out, his hands flying over the controls as he tried to keep up with the flood of damage reports. 
Briggs gritted his teeth. All ships, concentrate fire on their command vessel. We take that out. The rest will follow. The command vessel, a massive Rhinar dreadnought, was at the center of the enemy formation. It was heavily armored, bristling with weapons, and shielded by several smaller ships. Taking it down wouldn't be easy, but it was their best shot at breaking the enemy's morale. Focus all fire on that dreadnought, Briggs ordered, his voice cutting through the chaos. The human ships shifted their aim, targeting the dreadnought with everything they had left. The Rhinar, realizing the threat, moved to defend their flagship, but they were too slow. The combined firepower of the human fleet tore through the smaller escort ships, leaving the dreadnought exposed. Hit it with everything we've got, Briggs yelled, adrenaline surging through his veins. The dreadnought's shields flared, absorbing the initial barrage, but they couldn't withstand the sustained assault. The shields collapsed and the human weapons tore into the ship's hull. Explosions rippled across its surface and a final, massive blast tore the dreadnought apart. For a moment, everything seemed to pause. The destruction of the command vessel sent a shockwave through the Rhinar forces. There once, coordinated defense faltered, ships breaking formation as the chain of command collapsed. They're falling back, Harris shouted, disbelief in his voice. Briggs felt a wave of relief wash over him but he didn't let his guard down. Keep up the pressure. We push them out of the system. The human fleet, despite its losses, advanced. The Rhinar, their momentum shattered, retreated. What had begun as a desperate defense had turned into a full-scale route. Captain, we've got them on the run, Harris said, triumph evident in his voice. Briggs nodded feeling the weight of the battle lift from his shoulders. But there was no time for rest. The Rhinar would be back, and next time they'd be prepared. Start damage assessments and get me a casualty report, Briggs said, his tone softening slightly, and get the comms back online. We need to report this to command. As his officers moved to carry out his orders, Briggs allowed himself a moment to breathe. They had survived, but the cost had been high. He looked around at the tired battle, worn faces of his crew, and knew that they had earned their victory. But in the back of his mind, Briggs knew that this was only the beginning. The remnants of the Rhinar fleet retreated into the blackness of space, their once formidable armada reduced to a scattering of battered ships. The human forces held their positions, licking their wounds and preparing for what was to come. Captain Briggs stood at the center of the command room, his gaze fixed on the tactical display. Damage reports are coming in, sir, Harris said, stepping up beside him. We've lost three ships, and several more are barely holding together. The base's defenses are compromised. We're in no shape for another battle. Briggs nodded. We don't have a choice. The Rhinar won't give us the luxury of time. They'll be back, and we need to be ready. The silence that followed was heavy, the weight of the situation pressing down on everyone in the room. They had won a battle, but the war was far from over. The Rhinar would return, likely with a force even greater than before. Send out a distress signal to command, Briggs ordered. Request immediate reinforcements and get every engineer we have working on those repairs. We need to be ready to fight again. Harris nodded and moved to relay the orders. Briggs watched him go, his mind racing. The Reiner had underestimated them once, but they wouldn't make the same mistake twice. They would come back, and this time, they would be out for blood. Captain, incoming transmission, a comms officer suddenly called out, snapping Briggs out of his thoughts. It's from command. Put it through, Briggs said, turning to face the main screen. The image flickered for a moment before stabilizing. The face of Admiral Kovacs appeared, his expression as serious as Briggs had ever seen it. Captain Briggs, Kovacs began, his voice steady. We've received your report. Reinforcements are en route, but they're hours away. 
You'll have to hold the line until they arrive. Briggs nodded, the confirmation of his fears doing little to ease his tension. Understood, Admiral. We'll hold. Kovacs leaned forward, his gaze intense. Briggs. This is the last stand. If the Reinar break through, there's nothing between them and the inner colonies. You know what that means. Briggs felt a cold knot form in his stomach. The inner colonies were the heart of humanity's territory. The last stronghold. If they fell, there would be nothing left to defend. I know, sir, Briggs said, his voice firm. Kovacs nodded, his expression softening slightly. Good luck, Captain. We're counting on you. The screen went dark as the transmission ended, leaving Briggs staring at his own reflection in the glass. He turned back to his crew, who were waiting for his orders. You heard the Admiral, Briggs said, his voice carrying across the room. This is it. We're the last line of defense. We hold this position or we die trying. The words hung in the air, the finality of them sinking in. There was no escape, no retreat. They would fight to the last man, and they would make the Reinar pay for every inch of ground. Captain, we've got movement on the long-range scanners, Harris called out, breaking the silence. Multiple contacts, closing fast. It's them. Briggs took a deep breath, steeling himself for what was to come. All hands, battle stations, this is it, people. Give them everything you've got. The base erupted into activity as the crew prepared for the final assault. The last of the repairs were completed. Weapon systems were brought online, and the battered ships took up their positions around the base. There was no time for fear, no room for doubt. They had a job to do. The first Reinar ships appeared on the edge of the system, their numbers even greater than before. The tactical display filled with red icons, a sea of enemies that seemed to stretch on forever. But Briggs wasn't intimidated. He had seen worse odds, and he had survived. Fire at will, Briggs ordered, his voice cutting through the tension. The human ships opened fire, the blackness of space lighting up with the streaks of plasma and missiles. The Rhinar returned fire, and the battle was joined once more. But this time, the humans fought with a desperation born of knowing that there was no fallback, no second chance. The enemy closed in, their ships tearing through the human defenses. Explosions rocked the base as Reinar boarding parties breached the outer walls, flooding the corridors with their troops. Inside, the human soldiers fought back with everything they had, but the sheer number of enemies was overwhelming. Section 5 has fallen. Hold the line, Briggs yelled back, his voice raw from the strain. Do not let them through. He watched as the red icons on the display pushed closer, the human forces struggling to hold them back. It was a losing battle, and Briggs knew it, but they couldn't afford to lose. Not here. Not now. Sir, we've lost contact with the outer defense grid, Harris reported, his voice tinged with panic. Briggs clenched his fists, feeling the weight of every decision he had made. Pull back to the command center, he ordered. We make our last stand here. The crew fell back, retreating to the central hub of the base. The corridors outside were filled with the sounds of battle, the screams of the dying, and the advance of the Reinar. Briggs stood at the entrance to the command center, his weapon ready. This is it he said quietly to himself. This is where we hold the line. The doors to the command center blew open and the Reinar poured in. Briggs and his men opened fire, determined to take as many of the bastards with them as they could. The room became a killing ground, bodies falling on both sides. But the Reinar kept coming, their numbers overwhelming. Briggs felt a sharp pain in his side as a Reinar soldier's blade found its mark. He gritted his teeth, fighting through the pain, and continued firing. Around him, his men fell one by one, the Reinar pressing closer. But just as the last of his strength began to fade, a bright light filled the room. The sound of weapons fire ceased, replaced by the distant roar of engines. 
The Rhinar hesitated, their advance faltering. Reinforcements, Briggs whispered, a flicker of hope igniting in his chest. The Rhinar turned, their focus shifting to the new threat. Outside, the human fleet had arrived, ships pouring into the system, weapons blazing. The tide of battle shifted as the fresh reinforcements tore into the Rhinar forces. Briggs sank to the ground, the pain in his side spreading. He watched as the Rhinar were pushed back, their assault collapsing under the weight of the human counterattack. They had held the line. Captain, we did it, Harris said, dropping to his knees beside Briggs, his voice filled with relief. Briggs nodded weakly, his vision blurring. As the sounds of battle faded, Briggs closed his eyes, a faint smile on his lips. They had survived. Humanity had survived. The Rhinar were beaten, and the inner colonies were safe. For now.